Sometimes it seems the media won't be satisfied until every country on the planet has its own Stonehenge. Is the Netherlands the next on the list? Four thousand year old Stonehenge like sanctuary unearthed in the Netherlands. Well, that sort of uh, headline is always going to get attention from uh, quite a lot of people, isn't it? Don't you think? It is. Uh, it, it is. <laughs> and uh, uh, and then they made it even bigger by saying that it's like Stonehenge. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they? Yeah. Uh, I, I think uh, sometimes headlines like that actually obscure you know, the, the, the meat and the juice of, of what's going on in yes. these circumstances results are often far more interesting than any likeness to Stonehenge, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Uh, A be- little bit. Before we go any further, uh, the thing is, we can do what we do, Rupert and I, we couldn't do this um, without support from our Patreon folk. Um, so we'll just take the opportunity to thank... Uh, those people that yeah. uh, give us money on a monthly basis. And uh, if you feel like supporting us, do have a look in the uh, link below to our Patreon page where you can um, where, where you can join them. They're a good bunch of people, I have to you say. Can. In fact, we call them crew. We as do. Said, we, none of this could happen uh, without our crew. And uh, so, yes. And also worth saying that there is an absolute mountain of stuff on the Patreon site that is only available to patrons. So if you if you like the stuff that's on yeah. the YouTube uh, channel, then there's a load more of it that's As you only say, available there. Uh, there is quite a mountain of it because it's, it's uh, accumulated over the years. Uh, no, ki- no kidding. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, enough of that. Um, we're off mm. to the Netherlands uh, for our Stonehenge-like yeah. adventure. Um, the mm. article, which is in uh, Ancient Origins, which is always worth checking out, Ancient Origins online uh, um, the magazine. Um, archaeologists digging at an ancient site in the central Netherlands over the course of several years discovered something remarkable and unexpected. Following an analysis of excavations that have been ongoing since 2017, the archaeologists mm. have confirmed that this site contains burial mounds, ditches, cemeteries and pathways lined with wooden poles all of which were part of a sprawling religious sanctuary or ceremonial complex that was constructed more than 4,000 years ago. Mm. Um, 2017, and this article now is published uh, only now, um, Mm. and we've heard nothing about this in the interim. There's been absolutely no. nothing else. I mean, it goes, it's the same for a lot of archaeological sites, but this one in particular seems to be, be particularly tardy, and there's no uh, mm. other uh, sources apart from the article itself. There don't seem to be any papers or reports or anything like that. No, but for me, that just uh, that just adds weight to the archaeology, really, because, uh, you know, when you think of uh, of some of our... Some of the archaeologists who we respect more than uh, more than many others, for example, uh, people who don't talk about their work until the excavations are complete, yes. uh, so that they don't uh, start leaping to conclusions in advance. Uh, so the fact that they haven't published stuff about this in the interim, I actually found, uh, find quite intriguing. Um, it's a good thing. Yes, I think there's more to it than meets the eye there, but uh, nevertheless, mm. we'll uh, we'll read on. Um, this amazing mm. site, which some are already referring to as the Netherlands Stonehenge, was unearthed not far from the town of Tiel, a municipality located located 45 miles east of Rotterdam. Mm. Uh, complex is enormous, spanning the length of three football pitches, and that's impressive from end to yes. end. Nothing like this has ever been discovered in the Netherlands before, and its implications for the study of the nation's Bronze Age societies are immense. And there's the juice. That's it in a nutshell. I don't think Mm. there's much about this this, that is like Stonehenge at all. Um, (laughs) 
Well, yeah, yeah, okay. There's, uh, uh, with, I had I'll slight sympathy. Yeah, yeah, qualify we'll, we'll that, yeah, that but in, yes, in a moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the point is, you know, three football fields, that's a lot. That's huge. Yeah. You know, if there's um, yeah. um, uh, excavation over, you know, if there's stuff coming out of the ground over that uh, uh, kind of a, mm. an area making it actually very difficult to visualise. There are a couple of visualisations that come with this, but it's hard from them to make sense of the overall site. There is an overall, mm. there's a large wide-angle shot of the uh, of the site, but it just looks like a construction yeah. site, which it probably is. <laughs> uh, well, yes. Yeah, once again, uh, things being found because of, because uh, this is also development, isn't it, that's yeah. driven this? Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 Yes, I think it's more of an industrial uh, complex thing that's uh, making way for this. Mm. <coughs> um, as was the case at Stonehenge, the various features of the complex were carefully built to uh, align with the sun, planets or stars, or to signal important astronomical events that had a deeper meaning to Bronze Age Europeans. At both sites, mm. marking the arrival of the summer and winter solstice appears to have been a major priority. The largest mound served as a sun calendar, similar to the famous stones of Stonehenge in England, the archaeologists behind the new analysis said in a statement published by Reuters. I'd love to know what the detail of that was uh, and i don't think there is any more detail at reuters frankly about how they've uh, arrived at that have conclusion. you read have you read the reuters piece? i have I, I've, 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 I, I think I have, yes yeah. i've got the reuters piece in front of me and i agree with you that there, there, there is one detail where they've <laughs> okay so they've shown that some artifacts uh, that were buried were buried in a place where the sun would shine in between some pillars but I think well, <laughs> with no significant timing uh, for that, which means that, well, the sun could have, you know, as the day wore on, the sun's position through the pillars would uh, would yeah, move yeah. anyway. It's circumstantial. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, it's... I, I would need to see an awful lot more evidence to back that up, I have to say. Yeah, the quote says, this sanctuary must have been a highly significant place where people must have been... Always not a good idea to say must have been, uh, where no. people kept track of uh, special days in the year, performed rituals and buried their dead. Fair enough. Yeah, can't really argue with that. Rows of poles stood along pathways used for processions. Mm. Um, now, here's the thing. Archaeologists working at the site have discovered approximately 80 burials so far. Interestingly, one mm. of the graves contained the remains of a woman who was entombed along with a glass bead that was imported from ancient Mesopotamia. Mm. Uh, talking Iraq, or modern-day Iraq, yes. yeah. This is the oldest glass bead discovered during excavations in the Netherlands, and the researchers say it proves that Bronze Age trading networks connected northern Europe with parts of the ancient Near East, despite tremendous separations uh, in distance, there isn't a, a, mm. a date from the, uh, the, the, the that burial with the glass bead, though. That's a, a, be interested no, to see sadly, what happens when but, that gets yeah. narrowed down a bit. You know, mm. Um, mm. it's. Uh, I, I think one of the most compelling things about this uh, this find and this report, though, is that you know so often you get. Uh, sites uh, and excavations that they're claimed to be ritual or in whatever. And this is one of the very few where when you have that many burials associated with a place that you can say categorically that there would have been an awful lot of ritual going on if you're burying people yeah, there. Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. In, additional, yeah. In, in addition to the burial sites, archaeologists also discovered the remains of animal skeletons, human skulls, and bronze tools and weapons that were placed close to spots where the sun shone directly through openings into the complex's central mound. Mm. This suggests they were piled up in those locations for ritual purposes, possibly as sacrifices to some ancient forgotten god. Mm -hmm. Could be, maybe. Could be, yeah, yeah <laughs> could be. 
Um, so this is actually just a small sampling of what was discovered at this astonishing site. This is why I find it surprising that over so many years and, you know, when there's such a wealth of stuff that it hasn't, not much more of it has been said about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so while they believe the sanctuary site first constructed during the Bronze Age or approximately 4,000 years ago many of these objects are linked to both earlier and later eras this includes items made when the region was part of the Roman Empire okay and also during the Middle Ages this is also it yeah. is estimated that the site was used as a religious sanctuary for approximately 800 years after its initial construction in the late third or early second millennium BC, but it seems occupation mm. continued for long after that. So, uh, mm. the comparisons with Stonehenge, um, <clears throat> we're talking about <laughs> a period that you know that's considerably after the uh, you know the reckoned uh, building of the Sarsen stones at Stonehenge. The funny thing is, yes. we're talking about that many burials and that many artifacts around. Coupled with the, uh, um, the the indication that's given given in the artist's impression of what the site would have looked like, this has got mm. far more um, f far more um, similarities, stretching back a further thousand years to when the original Stonehenge, when it was just the bank and ditch and the Aubrey holes, and it definitely was yeah. being used more as a cemetery. And the similarities, yeah. you've still got the opening pointing at the uh, at the rising sun there. Yeah. Um, yeah. The similarities with, with 3000 BC <laughs> are much more striking than with Stonehenge as we see and know it, uh, know it now. And this, yeah. But this is 2000. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, but I, I, I do, I, I do find the fact that you know they they know from what they've excavated here that this was in consistent use for for a long time. Yeah. So the differences in the burials, you know, it'll be it'll be really nice to hear the full excavation report when it's published. Uh, but one of the other um, statistics, if you like, that came out of this, it took the archaeologists six years to. Uh, uh, to go through the uh, more than a million excavated objects. Um, that's that's a lot. I think that that has been the problem. Not only that, but not only the number of artifacts and the amount of work that go gone on, but it's the coordination of two hundred archaeologists. <laughs> Staggering. And more than one yeah. organisation associated with the you know so pulling it together one look can only guess at what's been going on uh, yes. behind the scenes to pull yes. it all together um, yeah. we, we need to keep a keep an eye on it because they're uh, they're going to make an exhibition there's a, a, a ah. local museum in teal apparently and uh, and they're going to be putting uh, some of the discoveries there oh, no idea how many and, uh, uh, and what have you but uh, that'll be an interesting thing to see mm. There's an interesting piece of speculation about how the uh, uh, the measurements were taken for you know, the, the rising sun or setting sun or whatever the alignment is. Mm. There's, a, there's a quote, it says, a, a, and I think this is a quote from an archaeologist, I don't know. A person, for example, a priest or priestess, stood on the hill which was flat on top and on which probably stood a large pole. So you've got two... Not one, but two inventions there. Maybe, yes. maybe right. The, the spokesperson explained. The priest then viewed the position of the sun from the fixed point of the pole. There were more posts around the hill as markers. They helped the priest determine the exact time of the year. Well, you've got to have a story, maybe. haven't you? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it's it's yes. What can you say? I suppose, as you say, you've got to have a story. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just dry stats. Um, yeah. Interesting. Maybe, maybe. Certainly, a site of this complexity, uh, it, it would have been seriously impressive. Um, oh, and but, uh, um, and you you can't underplay the significance of all this stuff in in the same place mm. you know archaeologically speaking mm. absolute uh, mm. gold mine but um, 
Mm. Comparisons it does make with me our wonder, with the Stonehenge uh, are sort of a bit yeah, misleading. Yeah, but as a, as a slight aside, I, 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 it's very interesting that they found uh, so that one woman uh, uh, burial with the glass bead from uh, Mesopotamia. And something that uh, has cropped up many times, really, that you get burials with a single bead, and the single bead was on a drawstring for a shroud or a drawstring maybe on a little pouch that held precious things. It's not that it was a piece of jewellery. Yeah. This was a bead on a drawstring. And uh, and I find that interesting, that you've got a burial here with, uh, with a bead from uh, Mesopotamia. Yeah. And so, for example, they found uh, beads from the same foundry that made Tutankhamun's beads in Scandinavia. Yeah. Uh, so it just makes you wonder if those uh, those trade routes must have been uh, very established. And, uh, you know, who knows what stories there are to be extracted from some of those little stats. But that was a, that's quite an evocative find there. Yeah. So, as you said earlier, it's definitely a case of um, uh, watch this space. We'll do our best. Mm. Um, yes, uh, we will. But, it, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, mm. it's, I'm glad we've been alerted to that. Mm. That's it for this uh, this little roundup, this little um, <clears throat> uh, little um, news report. Um, Nothing more to say, I don't think, uh, Rupert, until uh, the next time. No, or... no. I hope that's intrigued you as well. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye for now, folks. <laughs> see you. And, uh, if, uh, people are beginning to get used to us sort of hanging around. And... <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> uh, Still here. We must think of uh, must think of so- something to do. Something.